It's the first Sunday of 2016. Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Ospomele Lezondi. Happy New Year. Today we have information on the consumer and electronics show in America. We also go to Congo where a digital payment system from Benin has launched. Tonight, Prita Suraj joins us for a conversation about the popularity of certain Twitter hashtags. We saw fees must fall last year, so we'll ask whether the same trend will continue this year. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. News Network at SABC. Does your does it on email? Let's start with your social media and technology news. Chrono Cash is a digital money method that was developed in Benin in West Africa and recently launched in Congo. It has been adopted by the Congolese Post Office. This has helped repurpose the country's post office as most people were no longer going there. They say money makes the world go round, but in today's world, technology is well on its way to taking over if it hasn't already. CLK Technologies, a company from Benin, recently launched the Chrono Cash system in Congo's capital, Brazzaville. They're hoping to displace the widespread use of cash in money transfer transactions. The system works with the post office counter as a transaction station and involves a prepaid card. Once activated, the card can be used to transfer money to someone else's. How it happens? The simplest way you present it in the post office counter or in a window of mail partners. You ask for a map of the face value of the amount you want to transfer. Added to this are the transfer costs, generally between 1 and 3%. At this moment, activate your card because the, this card is valid when activated. When not activated, it is paper. The launch has come at a time where there is a global shift in technology. With its simple features and ease of use, the system assures a simpler and more secure process. The special feature in this transfer is that there is no paperwork, no ID card to present. You have no additional constraints that come with your money and you can send it to the beneficiary. The security is good. You cannot delete the ID. It is a completely secure product. The 166,000 US dollars Chrono Cash project was not only a boost in digital money transfer, but also a facelift for post offices in Congo. These had almost become obsolete due to the global technological shift. The post has become obsolete. We want to offer modern mail financial services. Today we cannot use the old paperwork service. We have to modernize our services. Dans toutes les postes du monde aujourd'hui, euh, vous trouvez plein de produits. Congo joins Togo, which adopted the Chrono Cash money transfer system in 2011. Ivory Coast, Benin, and Burkina Faso are set to follow suit. For now, it looks as if repurposing the post office has worked. The Consumer and Electronics Show is taking place in Las Vegas in the next few days. Already Samsung has announced its big CS 2016 win. Ford and Google are expected to sign a deal. Let's see what we can look forward to at this year's CES. <laughs> At this year's Consumer and Electronics Show, Google and Ford are expected to finalize a deal on the first commercial self-driving car. A Google spokesperson told Automotive News that the company would not comment on speculation, although Google officials confirmed that they're talking to automakers. In June, Google began testing self-driving prototype vehicles of its own design on public roads in America. Google is expected to make its self-driving car units, which will offer rides for hire a standalone business under its parent company, Alpha. A bit. While CES hasn't even started yet, a statement from Samsung has said that the technology company has been awarded an innovation award for one of its TV sets that will be on show there. It will be revealed on January 5 when CES starts in Las Vegas. LG Electronics has told us that it will unveil its most advanced dishwasher ever, which it says features a true stream and multi-motion to clean dishes more thoroughly. Hisense is a Chinese technology maker that had South Africa as its first overseas venture. Hisense is expected to be at CES to showcase what it has in store for the British consumer as it recently launched over there. The Huawei Mate 8 will be showcased for the first time there. There will also be a launch of the second generation of the Vive Virtual Reality Kit.
So after the 5th of January, the world will know what to expect from the tech world in 2016. If you have a Twitter, Instagram or Facebook account, you probably have come across new phrases all the time. Phrases like on fleek, bay or young thing have now become everyday lingo because of their social media popularity. But what do they actually mean and where do they come from? Bye Felicia. This phrase literally means go away. Bye Felicia. It originated from the movie Friday and it was phrased by an American actor Ice Cube. Then we have on flick, which means on point. The origin is a bit sketchy, but the phrase is said to be coined by a girl on Vine. Gonna get crunk, eyebrows on flick. Then there is bay. The term means before anybody else. But bay has since been turned into an abbreviation of babe. As Pharrell Williams show us in this video, asking a babe to come and get it. Then we have lit or turn up, which basically means party. But proper turn up is when things get really hot and exciting at an event. If that's the case, we would say it was turned up. And finally, we have hashtag. Well, I know it's not a phrase, but I think the hashtag deserves an honorable mention. This sign above number three on the keyboard has gained popularity beyond measures. It's even bigger than celebrities. Phrases like fees must fall or the year we mispronounce back would be nothing without the hashtag. So this year, maybe you will come up with your own phrase that will gain prominence in social media. Well, it's no longer get a walk up, is it? Now let's take a look at some of the technology stories that made headlines in the last week of 2015. Jump. 2015 was a big year for Africa's homegrown innovation. The continent saw a boom in technology breakthrough and innovation in the last few years, and the past year was no different, where a number of young innovators showed why homegrown solutions are the answer for many of the region's challenges. Anesi and Osine are some of Africa's young innovators making a difference. The teenage brothers developed their own browser known as Crocodile Browser Lite that they say is faster and more easily accessible on lower-end phones available in Africa and other developing countries. I just want to solve problems that people have to make people's life easier and better. Then, there were four Nigerian students who developed an app called Humane to help blind people perform tasks like using their smartphones. We looked at them and we saw that these people are separated from the world, as in they are separated from the people that can't see, all right? They, they, they don't, they can't move freely on their own, you know, they can't keep browse the internet, they can't play music, they can't, you know. So we said, okay, let's just do something for these people and let, let them be part of the social world. Meanwhile, here in South Africa, a self-taught computer programmer created a program that teaches inmates at the Worcester Correctional Center how to code. To be behind with technology, it is a challenge for us as offenders. Uh, we need to keep updated with what is happening within the world out there. For me, being 15 years in prison, um, having to go out and not knowing what technology is about is, is a major concern for me. So uh, computer coding, I think, should have been in correctional service a long time. Moving on to Asia, China launches high-definition Earth observation satellite. The satellite has accurately entered the pre-selected orbit. Now I announce the Gulf and 4 mission is successful. Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Pritesh Suraj, or I Pritesh on Twitter, is already in studio for our conversation. Stay with us.
funerals. It's part of the human journey none of us are spared. In the unfortunate event of death, the last thing your family should have to worry about is money. That is why all clientele funeral plans pay out within 24 hours. Didier Drogba, a footballer from Ivory Coast, was named as the third most influential celebrity in Africa. Where I saw him display, he's a very nice player. He always makes an impact. Drogba donated his five million US dollars endorsement fee to the construction of a hospital in Abidjan. Well, there are some lesser known football stars in the continent that you haven't met. Really? And are deserving of more attention. I think we will, we will do better. The Journal, every Saturday at half past one on SABC News. You can be a part of the conversation on uh, SABC Network on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Now, 2015 was the year Twitter hashtags led to physical protest marches in South Africa. There was Fees Must Fall, which became Fees Have Fallen, and Roads Must Fall and Roads So White. Let's take a look. Fees Must Fall led to the shutdown of various universities in South Africa. There are protests on the grounds of the Union buildings in Pretoria, Lutuli House in Johannesburg and outside Parliament in Cape Town. Eventually, students were told that fees would not increase in 2016, as they had been hoping. This is from something that spread because of a Twitter hashtag. In 2016, we are already seeing the dominance of one Twitter hashtag. Black people on Twitter have started the year with mispronounced back. Here, a user by the name of Ngobile says she's tired of being called Nkabela by white South Africans. Some are saying they will be renaming white people's names if the individual doesn't make a bigger effort to learn the African name of the person they are addressing in conversation. Could the Twitter hashtag also result in bigger conversations and real physical change, as we saw with others in 2015? Some then started sharing a YouTube video of a white South African praising himself in Isizulu and asked why we don't see more of this. In Sinzo, I got Alex and the crew, not just Santa, San Monano Cavazalone, or Samsagas when you show them the shop, a tennis to Pesan Lumum Yam Kamaravin share. Um, half of the Carolas and Canobayan, getting the Tukus, a stable of the Marishin, Hinkans and Kalukis no Hamanunina, who took his Kalubu to Bez and Boga Potica, who sheep who poison him, Bongo, no musket one side, two children, Mutos and Abafana and Tomasane, Spear of the Nation, Mabong and Tini, Temba, 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 Gila, Yumilo. Oh, so much then there were others who shared a video of a Chinese man in Pittsburgh who also speak, speaks fluent Isizulu. He says he arrived in South Africa in 2005. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in South Africa. In 2005. Yeah. Can be in South Africa. Yeah. 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 Hello and thank you for being a part of our network. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having me again. Now there's a new hashtag in 2015. Yes. Um, the year we mispronounced back. Do you think it's going to gain traction? I do. I think if you look at uh, the traction it's gained already, is quite significant. And it can just snowball from here. And I think if you look at the dynamics of our country, it's actually kind of strange that you have individuals who want to pronounce French menu items and Portuguese menu items correctly, yet the waiter is serving them, they don't want to take the effort to 
pronounce the name correctly or pronounce the name of their colleagues properly of anyone else in society. So I do think a lot of people have had issues with this. I think it's the Twitter hashtags allowed them to voice this and gain traction and, uh, and bring other people to their cause. Mm. Um, why do you think that the Twitter hashtag has resulted in such a big conversation? Because um, it's a problem that's not new in South Africa. It's yes. something that's always been happening. Yes, but it's also a problem where people haven't had a way to actually address it in the past. You know, they've had this issue, they've discussed it in the circle of friends, or they've been angry in, in, in when they've experienced a situation, but there hasn't been a way to actually gain traction and to bring other people to the same cause. And now what's happening is because of social media is bringing people together, allowing people to have an idea that lives for a longer period of time and bring more people onto it so that it snowballs and grows and gains traction. Mm. Um, what can or what happens when a Twitter hashtag then spills over and to, to platforms outside Twitter as opposed yeah. to just staying on Twitter? We saw that last year with, with massive student protests. Yes, because what's, be what's the beauty of hashtags, which I love, is they're becoming platforms platform agnostic. So you can create a hashtag and no one's saying use this hashtag only on Twitter. You can use it on Facebook, you can use it on Instagram, it goes across the board. You can go onto Google and search for that and see the different results that you get. So the beauty of it is these days it's regardless of the platform that the hashtag actually starts, it's going to spill over, it's become platform agnostic and it's really about spreading an idea and whether that idea needs to be spread visually as it is in Instagram or within small characters on Twitter, that's the way it's going to be spread. Uh, Pritesh, is there a method of starting a hashtag that becomes popular and that gains traction and that starts massive conversations? Well, I think th 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 the hashtag has to be based on a real uh, social need, social want, something that interests people. So it's based on passion. So we've seen in 2015 those passions may have been sports-based or political-based, but when you've got something that people are passionate about, other people want to adopt it and share it and spread it. But there has to be this passion that ignites the feeling within uh, individuals and consumers out there for it to really spread. Mm -hmm. um, is it, uh, do hashtags then uh, gain different audiences in social media? We know that, um, for example, in South Africa, there's mm -hmm. the phenomenon of black Twitter. Um, how do they then make sure that it's not a conversation that only takes place on black Twitter yeah. um, with uh, other people on Twitter blocking the conversation out? Well, I think the, the secret is, is the evolution of hashtags. As we're sitting right now, hashtags can be in silos. So they can be these hashtags that I created that are really great, but it's limited to certain groups of people that are out there, which is not great. But in 2016, I think one of the things that you're going to see, the way these silos are going to be get broken is really that hashtags are going to evolve to encompass things like emojis. Once they start having graphical elements on it, it doesn't matter whether this hashtag is for a particular group, a particular segment of society, a number of different people are going to understand it, even if you don't speak the language or don't understand it, you can understand the key idea behind it. Mm. In the introduction, I did say that 2015 was probably the year of the Twitter hashtag um, with the student protests. Do you think th that then um, this particular hashtag is the start of the, a similar trend in 2016, 2016 uh, becoming the year of the hashtag again? Uh, yes, because you know, hashtags really started off really proper in 2014, 2015 they just snowballed and they were everywhere. But in 2016 what you have is you have more groups of people who now understand how to use hashtags, they understand how to personalize it, because there was an adoption process where a lot of people just adopted a hashtag and copied and pasted and used the same thing. But in 2016 because people understand how to create their own hashtag, which is such a simple process, it's hashtag and, and the idea that you have. And when you actually create this it means that you can pass your own ideas and you're going to have great amounts of adoptions, which means that you may have things on a macro level which started it off, but then soon it's gonna filter down to community levels, things that affect my little community, and then onto an individual personal level so that people can highlight to their small audiences what's troubling them in life as well, or what, what they're enjoying in life as well. Mm -hmm. um, y you mentioned that um, conversation shouldn't um, stay in silos, um, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, how do you then bring other people into the conversation and not have what you were saying that shouldn't be happening and basically that conversation staying within a small group of people. Yeah, it's, it's, it all depends on the way you actually create the hashtag and the content that you link to the hashtag. 
because if you want more people involved, you have to have it in a way that's accessible to a wide group of people. So for example, if you create a hashtag that a lot of people are not going to understand the context of it, and it's written in a way where only a certain group of people are going to understand the context, then it doesn't have that ability to start trending. It doesn't have the ability to snowball, as I say. So what you're going to see is when you're creating that hashtag on an on a issue or something that you enjoy, you've got to make sure that it has the ability to attract the attention of a wide range of people and not just people who are similar to you. So as, as you say, you know, it's, it's not the mirror effect. You don't want to mirror your personality and your image out there when you create the hashtag. It's got to go out there and expand to a wide range of people. Mm. The year we mispronounce back, do you think yes. it has a case? Yes, I do. Uh, I think you and I can both relate. We both have pretty difficult yeah, names. I think like <laughs> that's butchered or, well, can I just give you a new name? That's what they would say. Can I, I call you Sipo? Uh, I, I, <laughs> get call, I get called Peter. So yeah. my, my thing is like, hi, I'm Pritesh. Hi, Peter. How are yeah. you doing? So, so I can relate to that. And I think a lot of people do. And, and the beauty of it is, while a lot of it is said in jest, the beauty of it is that I think it's going to make a lot of people think out there. And I think right. there's a bit of social stigma where they're going to get embarrassed to actually mispronounce names. Yes. They want to pronounce it correctly. All right. Thank you very much, Professor Suraj. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Professor Suraj Day is from Product of the Year. Let's take a short break. And you can find us on email. It's newsnetwork at sabc.co.za. Newsnetwork at sabc.co.za. We'll be back. As stories are broken around the world, SABC makes sure you do not miss out. As the stories unfold throughout the day, News at 8 updates all newsworthy stories worldwide. Globally, we are there. Locally, we leave no story untold. Make a dead with News at 8 every Saturday and Sunday on SABC News, Africa's news leader. Thank you very much for staying with us. Now, while some of us are still getting used to drone technology, a Taiwanese technology research team has found a way to pilot drones and control light using an Apple Watch. This might look like an ordinary drone, and it is of the sort many around the world might have got for Christmas. That is, until you see how Mark Venn is flying it in Taiwan's Taichung City. You could be forgiven for thinking he's using the force. It certainly does look like something out of Star Wars, but the truth could be almost as impressive. Previously, we've needed complicated controls to fly drones, but now we can use a wearable device and through human behavior and gestures, directly interact with them, using a hand to control and fly drones directly. Venn and his team at PVD Plus have written an algorithm for the Apple Watch that allows it to understand and interpret hand gestures. By moving his hands forwards and backwards, Venn can control the pitch and tilt of his Parrot AR drone. It's not just flying that Venn's software allows him to control, though. Turning on lights with a clap might be a long-established technological feat, but have you ever seen a light turn red like this? When I clap twice, the light turns on, as it detects that I'm clapping. When I write an English R in the air, the red light turns on. And when I write an English Y, the yellow light turns on. Lastly, when I clap twice, the light turns off. The Internet of Things has been much discussed in recent years. The increased connectivity of products and hardware, meaning an ever more sophisticated automation. Here's what some people have been sharing in social media. After the revelations that American singer Beyonce Knowles wants to write and star in a film about South African, Seda Bartman, there have been a lot of conversations about it in social media. Bartman was one of two black South African women who were enslaved and paraded in a freak show kind of manner in Europe because of her big bum, which Europeans were not familiar with in the 1800s. 
English all-rounder Ben Stokes has been the toast of England and has been trending in South Africa. The 24-year-old scored the second fastest double century in history on day two of the second test against the Proteas in Cape Town. He had a total of 15 boundaries and six sixes. Apart from Ben Stokes, that match in its entirety has also been a chatting point. That's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. News Network at sabc.co.za and email. We leave you with a video showing how different countries celebrated the arrival of 2016. From me, Pumela Lezondi, and the rest of the network team, have a good one. Thank you.